could you explain in layman's terms how AI could be used to censor or suppress free speech in a more expansive and um, unregulated way than we're we're already seeing right now? Yeah, this is a great question, and it's what everyone is talking about on Capitol Hill, and of course, as you mentioned, Elon Musk and leaders here in Silicon Valley. For me, the, the problem of AI is, is less about censorship and more about privacy, transparency, and especially bias. Um, so ChatGPT Chat and most of the other, they call them large language model, you know, AI, they're more like a publisher. They're more like the New York Times, meaning they get information from the wild or from the internet and then in this case, the public internet, and then they create new content, you know, with their, their software. And this is different than what Facebook or Twitter do. These social media platforms simply share content generated by one user and make that available for other users. And, and that's where you, you, know, you see the, the censorship coming into play. So AI engines need to Scrape is the verb they use, which is to gather online information in order to to train their AI data engines, which means to teach the AI software how to answer questions based on content out there on the Internet. So they literally go out and scrape and read data every single day from all sorts of sites and especially from social media sites like Twitter, where all of our posts are, are public, you know, as Facebook's a little different, they tend to be more restricted to your, you know, your so-called online uh, friends. So these AI computers try to read posts, read information, new sites at a very fast machine level scale, which is why Elon Musk recently announced and limited the number of tweets that, you know, someone can read in a period of time if you're not a blue check user. He was specifically doing that to limit the massive scraping of Twitter by hmm. all these AI companies. You know, there are literally 500 AI startup companies here in Silicon Valley, probably, wow. probably much more. So privacy is an issue when AI scrapes mine and your personal posts and tweets are invading your privacy without your permission. This is a very big part of what the Europe EU laws are doing are dealing with when they regulate AI and the bias issue comes in because there's no transparency we don't really know where does chat GPT or these other engines get their training data if they gather their data primarily from right-wing news sites you can expect the answers will generally be you know reflecting right-wing points of view right from Fox or Breitbart or Newsmax or whatever they gather data primarily from the New York Times and CNN and Washington Post you'll you'll get more of a left-wing bias but when they don't transparently publish hmm. where they're gathering the training data it's not it's mysterious and and the engineers of course don't know exactly how <laughs> The software curates it very well, but they do know where they're getting the training data. And that is something that should be transparently published mm -hmm. and known. So that's kind of on the input side. On the output side, these AI platforms may also introduce very blunt tools to bias the output. For example, when I was in Washington, D.C. earlier this week, I learned apparently ChatGPT doesn't allow you to create an image of the Clintons that also includes blood on their hands just simply won't let you do it. Hmm. Uh, but it will absolutely let you make an image of Trump with blood on his hands. So that just creates sort of an obvious blunt type of, of bias. And by the way, it turns out uh, you can get an image of the Clintons with strawberry jam on their hands, which apparently is how people go around, you know, these kinds of things. But you can see how these biases are not very transparent. And, you know, if, if, if any AI platform for example, ChatGPT does become a big monopoly and take over, if you will, the village town square where all of us go to learn and have conversation. This will start to become a, a real issue. You know, today there isn't quite any one dominant monopoly. In fact, you, there's ChatGPT. Apparently, there's free GPT. There's GOP GPT, left GPT. So. Today, it's more like New York Times versus Fox News. But if somebody becomes a monopoly, then absolutely bias, neutrality, 
transparency. You know, the, these pillars that uh, we've talked about uh, also kind of apply to AI just as well as they do to social media. Well, can you talk to us about those four pillars, why they're important? These are some of the solutions you've put forward for protecting against big tech and government censorship. Exactly. So we, we sometimes call them the four guardrails. And because for the social media platforms and these other big companies, their ability to innovate content moderation rules is very important for them and, and for the industry. But the four pillars are safety, transparency, neutrality, and accountability. And, and safety means, just to hit each one of those four, safety means that not all content should be published. There is some content that is truly harmful. And we can all think of examples exhorting people to use violence, child pornography, spam, computer viruses, doxing people by sharing their real home address, stuff like that. But that should be blocked. Transparency is kind of what it sounds like. And this is the low hanging fruit. Most proposals focus on transparency, you know, at least from, from Congress. It means they have to publish their content moderation rules. They have to publish the enforcement actions that are related to, you know, maybe first strike, second strike, third strike, you know, what rules you broke, these are the enforcement actions. We'll label your content, we'll ban you for a week, we'll demonetize your site, whatever the enforcement might be. So if someone receives a notice that says, hey, uh, your content is blocked or censored, at least you will know exactly why, what rules you broke. That has to be transparent. Neutrality means platforms need to avoid taking sides, uh, content disputes, they should boost or share or de-boost, you know, equally and not discriminate based on viewpoint or differences of, of opinion. Uh, this becomes very important, as you mentioned, our, um, you know, our, our slogan, you know, fairness and progress are achieved only when all voices are heard. And if you don't have neutrality, mm. you, you're going to miss voices and harmful things, you know, come from that. And accountability means that these companies who are effectively monopoly platforms, they need some independent third party to hold them accountable to make sure they stay within these guardrails or these pillars. Um, and this uh, accountability entity would be outside of Facebook, for example, or outside of Google, but should not be a government agency. Mm -hmm. It needs to be a non-government entity because as soon as you have a government agency trying to regulate what should be blocked or censored, you've now started uh, the, uh, an even bigger problem, which is, you know, constitutional issues with our free speech uh, rights where the government starts getting involved with their uh, their natural incentives toward political partisan hmm. censorship. Uh, so anyway, those are the four pillars or guardrails. They all work together um, uh, and, and allow these companies to still innovate their content moderation.